Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for I Don't Live to Drain, I Drain to Live. Um, the inspiration for this presentation came when I was working on slides for a file naming conventions webinar, and I put myself to sleep. Um, when I came to, I asked my colleague, are we data librarians or are we energy vampires? So we thought it would be fun to create a survey and try and ascertain. But first, a bit about us. Joe. When I share my screen, the unmute button goes away. <laughs> um, Lindsay, can you meet real quick? We're in the same office, so we echo a little bit. Uh, my name is Joe Klein. I use they, them, or he, him pronouns, and I am the Geographic Information Science, or GIS, and Data Visualization Librarian at UNC Greensboro out of the Research, Outreach, and Instruction Department. Um, and a lot of times I go to bed as the sun comes up, so I uh, would be what is considered a night walker if we're thinking about it in terms of vampires. Um, and I'm Lindsay Guypen. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm the data services librarian at UNCG. Um, I am always in bed by 9 p.m. If I'm not, something has gone terribly wrong. So I uh, consider myself to be a day walker. It's also worth noting that neither Joe nor I is able to fly or transfigure ourselves into um, a mythic creature or a bat. So a bit about um, energy vampires, if you don't know, there is a TV show called What We Do in the Shadows, and there is a character named Colin Robinson. Colin Robinson always uses both of his names. Um, he is sort of this generic office worker. He works in a cubicle. I'm not sure what he does. They never say. Um, his goal every day is to be as annoying and boring as possible. You see him pictured here, uh, sharpening a bunch of pencils loudly uh, near a coworker's desk. Um, and he also cannot uh, fly or transfigure himself into a bat. He generally commutes via bus. He's also a day walker, um, unlike his, his counterparts in the show. So we decided to create a survey um, of data librarianship, and we invited um, anyone who identified as a data librarian or an information professional who did data things to take the survey. We distributed it, distributed it via a number of listservs, including um, the RDAP listserv. We ended up with 51 responses, which was way more than we were anticipating, um, but I think folks had fun taking the survey. So we just created a Google form with 15 questions. Um, some were sort of multiple choice, but we used checkboxes to allow folks to select as many responses as they felt applied to them. Uh, we also let folks write in responses, and then we did have some short answer questions at the end. Um, we also peppered in some vampiric language just to see if we could catch anybody unawares uh, to admit that they were, you know, an energy vampire. Um, so yeah, go ahead and next, thanks. All right, so first thing uh, is job title. What is a data librarian? What are they usually called? Um, the image on the left shows you sort of a word cloud of the words in job titles, um, but it's interesting to note that 69% of the job titles were unique and only 63% contained the term data. So there are 37% of this group of data librarians out there um, who are able to help with data things that they don't necessarily have data in their title. Um, we also asked these folks, where do you work? 74% uh, work at academic libraries and the rest are pretty evenly distributed um, between the responses on the right. There were a few more who uh, worked at private companies or in corporate libraries. Um, we also ask folks, you know, when do you go to work? This is us trying to see if there's day walkers or night walkers. Um, we had 100%, 100% day walkers. Uh, a lot of folks come in as early as 6.30, so right when the sun comes up. Um, other folks come in as late as, as 10 a.m. Most of these individuals, the education that they use, they, and again, they could select as many as they wanted to, but um, almost all of them have an MLS or MLIS. Um, a few folks are using their BA or their BS in their job. I know Joe has a science background and they often use that science background as a data librarian. Um, you'll also note here in the middle that uh, five individuals do have a certificate of approval from their vampiric, their regional vampiric council. Um, and then we also wanted to highlight who these individuals are working with. So a lot of researchers 
um, a lot of grad students, but also data librarians work with other librarians and other colleagues. So we wanted to really highlight to those of you in, in the audience who are not, who do not identify as a data librarian that we are here to help you with your data. So Joe's gonna start talking about some of the services that data librarians provide, um, and we're hoping to inspire some uh, future collaboration. Um, and speaking about those services, uh, so 88% of the folks that we surveyed provide uh, data management services. So things like um, lots of different services within there. Um, and I don't have time to go into all of them. So that was kind of the biggest uh, uh, service that folks provide. And there's some other ones, including instruction, presentations, and workshops in data topics, reference and consultations, outreach events, and other programmings, um, and then more, as you can see. Um, so one thing that we found was interesting is uh, GIS services, which is something that I do, um, was kind of the least often uh, provided service, even below vampirism, including but not limited to extracting the life force of others, especially through sustained and intentional emotional or visceral anguish and repeated annoyance irritation and or psychological exsanguination. Um, so 11 uh, uh, folks responded that that uh, was an aspect that their job encompasses. So sometimes when we're doing instruction, it does feel like that is what we are doing, um, but other times it doesn't. So uh, we also asked folks what data related tools they consider themselves to be proficient using and teaching. 94% uh, considered themselves uh, proficient using and teaching spreadsheet tools. So this is what I used to make most of these charts as well, or what we used to make uh, most of these charts. Um, so following up with that are some more specific tools. Um, but one thing that I noted was that a lot of the ones that more people knew how to do are considered to be more general um, data tools versus the more specific ones where maybe only one person or a couple people knew how to uh, or were proficient in those. So we want to focus, uh, we have a lot of services that were represented in our responses, but we're going to talk a little bit more about instruction um, and whether it's unexciting and soul crushing and indicative of, you know, data librarians being energy vampires or not. Um, so some things that maybe make our data instruction, you know, maybe not unexciting and soul crushing. Uh, so a lot of them include various formats like workshops, companion materials, um, other instructional materials, sometimes special projects, um, or even guides uh, to help patrons, for example, find and use data. So these are all qualitative responses, all um, open text responses that people um, typed in about things that they found rewarding about their work or other things they would like people to know that aren't, you know, data librarians and or uh, an adjacent information professional. Um, so a lot of this uh, instruction is popular, it's practical, it maybe even is fun, question mark. Um, so some summer data workshops for summer research assistants are pretty popular, um, and you get to incorporate assistants which are hopefully fun, but maybe not. Uh, they also have impact on others. So this is something that I consider, you know, even if it is unexciting and soul crushing, we're at least doing something. Um, so some folks, you know, get help getting a job with the instruction after doing instruction with data services librarians or data librarians. Um, some folks indicate they wish they had learned this forever ago or at least three years ago. Um, and then other folks actually do enjoy training their students who can then go on and train other people. So they are pretty impactful um, services that we offer. And there are a lot of different ways to incorporate this data um, and uh, services and specifically data literacy. So the ability um, or the competency uh, uh, for folks to be able to find, evaluate, use, create, and cite data um, and other kind of information like data visualizations created with data. Um, so some strategies that you can use, um, especially if you're gonna be working with a data librarian or you know, if you don't have a data librarian handy, although there's plenty on Twitter and online, um, so you can use or adapt existing lessons, integrate those into existing instruction. So especially if you do anything with information literacy, data literacy is an extension of that, um, and it's very extendable to that. Um, and as some folks responded, it's not extra to what we normally do in libraries. Data is an integral part of the work that we do. Um, and, you know, realize it is a tool. You can wield it in many ways, um, and many people can wield it as well. Um, other things you can do is taking advantage of databases like Simply Analytics, which was previously offered by NC Live in previous years, but is not unfortunately anymore, um, and the State Data Center, which is listed on NC Live resources. Um, and then also collaborate. So this is an area where collaboration is vital, quote unquote. Um, take advantage of data librarian networks. So again, there are a lot of folks on Twitter, on Slack, private mailing lists, other independent organizations, um, many of which are open and anybody can contribute or collaborate or, or work with them. And finally, 
are data librarians energy vampires? You decide. <laughs> all right, and that is all we have. If there are any questions. And we have a question in the chat about, would we ever consider surveying students? Um, yes, yes, we would for sure, especially um, there are graduate students, maybe graduate assistants who work in the library with data um, or our MLIS students, for example, at UNC Greensboro um, or other various students who are doing anything related to information and data and especially librarianship. All right, well, thank you so much to our virtual lightning talk presenters. Um, yes, round of applause. We're now going to um, end this webinar in this Zoom, and we'll see you back in five minutes for a couple more in-person presented lightning talks.